Today we're making little envelope pockets. They are super fast to make, they're really, really easy and there's no sewing required. So each of these, and I've clearly made quite a lot, has collage on the front, if I pick one. So they have collage here and a faux envelope flap. And on the back, we've got a pocket which is made bigger and more robust by adding a couple of hinges. I'll show you how to do all of this. So they're made from my favourite supply, book pages. So just a regular page from a book like this. In fact, any page from a book will do. And on the front, I've added and used up lots of little bits of scrap paper. So this is your opportunity to delve into your supplies and use washi tape, stamps. I've used collage paper. I've used little bits of fabric, text from a piece of paper, and then some of my gel pens. So a wonderful opportunity for using up some of your supplies and playing with what you have. But what's really, really wonderful about these is how they work in a junk journal or a folio. You could put them on the inside cover of a journal because they're quite small and the pocket means you could then tuck things in. You could add them to an upturned page pocket. So maybe if you've got one in a junk journal, you could tuck it in there. Or you could flip it on the side of a page by adding washi tape on the left. So, so many ways to use it. I also thought you could use it in maybe a folio. So if you have something like this, you could put it in the inside pocket just here. They're perfect for mass making and I'll give you some tips for doing that. But the best quality is the ability to use up so many of your bits of paper and your supplies. And I just think that this is a project that will help you feel good when you make them and you can clearly make quite a lot. The process steps as usual, I've set out here. You can find them in Pinterest, take a screenshot, let's have a play. The first thing we want to do is choose our book page. So I'm choosing one that's got text on it and the colour of this is just a little bit aged. So it's not exactly a vintage book, but it's got that warm vanilla glow about it. And the reason I like that is you just see a little bit of it behind the collage. So it would work with glossy book pages, but this is what I choose to use today. Let me tell you the size and obviously the width is going to be relevant for the size of your page or the cover of your junk journal if you're going to put it in one. This is 14 centimetres wide by, so that's five and a half inches and the height of this is 21 centimetres which is about eight and a quarter inches so probably a regular book size. And to mass make, which I think you'll probably want to do with these, I would suggest you pull off at least five pages to begin with. You can see that this is quite an old one because it's such soft paper when you tear it. Yum. So with your book pages, maybe I'll work with five today to show you. Three, four, five. What we want to do to begin with is just make a fold to create the upper flap and also fold back at the bottom. So I start with the flap. I'm not going to measure, but I want to have a flap that is about, for this size of page, four centimetres in depth. And the reason for that is I want the flap to feature quite substantially in the design of this little envelope pocket. I don't want it to be coming right down here because I want lots of space down here to collage. So I want a flap that is about four centimetres. I just think they're really, really cute. So at the top of your page with it facing you, fold down about four centimetres for this size of page. But if you have a bigger page, scale up. And let's make that nice and neat with our bone folder. Then I am going to, so that gives us the flap, fold the back up to make a pocket, but I don't want the pocket to be all the way to the top. I'm going to leave about a centimetre or a centimetre and a half gap 
between the top of the page that we folded up and the top of our pocket. So that is the folding done. How easy was that? We've got the flap and we've got a fold at the back. And if you want to mass make, my suggestion is that it, at this stage, you just go in for doing all of the folding. Let's go to about there. Again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't measure on this project. I think you'll probably be pretty good at getting them to be consistent with the dimensions that I've suggested. So in no time at all, we've got quite a selection of our basic envelope pocket folds done. What I'm going to do is just trim off the corners of the flaps, but I want to leave at least a centimetre or so here on the side. It's just the design that I like. It means this cut doesn't go all the way up to the corner. It just makes it really pretty. So if we want to mass make, we can do this in batches. So literally just open up your book pages I think a batch of five is about the maximum I can do this on. Just shuffle them together so that they are all aligned at the top, like that. Get your scissors ready. There we go. And I'm going to fold that over. And I'm going corner to corner, getting these corners as neat as possible. I'm literally going to cut through all of those at once, so this makes it a lot speedier. The angle that I've taken means I've still got some of that flap here on the side. So I've got just a really nice shape and that's pretty much all we need to do now before we have a go at playing with all those lovely supplies. Just get creative and do some collage. So I said this was a very quick project. And we're already on step four. So we're going to make a couple of hinges and glue them to the back pocket. This is a slightly larger page I used. So the pocket at the back has got a lot of capacity and I really think that will help it not come away. If you just added glue on the sides here, the, t the tendency is for those to come separated. But this capacity just means you can stick a few more things in, maybe tags. So all you need to create your hinges is take a piece of scrap paper and a book page is fine and we're going to just add a couple of hinges either side of the back of the pocket. So this is just a, I think this is a bit of Spanish dictionary. I need a piece that is just a bit less than the height of that back pocket. So I don't really want this to be too visible but I do want it to be almost as big as the back pocket to make it as robust as possible. So let's just make a couple of these and add them. So literally take a little rectangle of paper, fold that in half and I think I'll use my stick of glue for this. It's just a little bit stronger and drier really is probably the key point. Get it the right way round. And I'm bringing that up almost to the top of that back pocket but I am going as far as I can close to the edge like that. I'll do the other one. So just fold your little piece of paper into a long rectangle, get the glue on there and again take your glue all the way to the end. So we do want this to be well glued and add that as a hinge to your pocket. I'm almost to the top. I don't really want that to be visible because it's white. And then all we need to do is grab our glue, put that on the top of our little hinges. Pull that over. And there we are. A little bit of inspiration perhaps to get you going and I said I'd made a lot. I am on a mission to reduce the paper that I've got in my craft room and book pages for that matter. So a lovely bird, got some stamping, a label. This is so good for using up those little bits and you can go at speed, you can go at pace. You can create them in 
palettes that suit the design of your journal. So this one is very different. It's like those muted greens and a little bit of vintage feel. On this one I've added a little bit of a delicate pattern in green in a stamp. And I've got a beautiful bird there. I think I've got a bit of book page and washi. Something a bit more eclectic. I think these are Tina's Shabby Dabby Doodah digitals and some scrapbook paper. Sometimes I've added that thin washi along the top with a bit of gold, I just like that. I've got all sorts of tiny little bits on here using things up. And I find that if you go for clashy as opposed to matchy, it's actually a lot of fun. If you've got any little digitals that you haven't used up for a while, it's a great opportunity to use those. And you might find that you're just in your craft room for rather a large number of hours just creating lots of them. So let's cover some of the front of ours and maybe I'll begin with just some collage paper and I'll get going down here to begin with. So I've literally dug into my white basket and just pulled out a few scraps. They're probably in neutral tones. I might want to add some sort of focal point. But I tend to start down here on the right hand side. In fact, I might reach for a focal point to begin with. I feel like a bird and as you now know I have got pots above my desk with little birds in and all sorts of other little digitals. I don't want, I don't want anything too big. I do like that one. I'm just going to have a go with him. Now the key to this is to make sure that your collage goes on so that your image is still visible under the flap because we're going to glue that down. So I think I can get him on about there. I will glue him on and tear off what I don't need. I like to add the collage with a bit of a margin still showing between the piece of paper that I'm adding and the border of the book page, just so that I get the nuance of that old paper showing through. It's just the way I like it. If you went all the way to the edge, it would probably be a bit stronger, but I think it's okay like this. So I'm seeing his face quite like that. I'll just tear that back. I like him a lot. So what else have we got then that goes with him? So a really, let's say, not particularly delightful piece of scrapbook paper. What I've done is put it through an embossing folder. I think that would be marvellous for just accenting him. So let's maybe reduce it. It's a very powerful teal. I don't necessarily want don't necessarily want that much. If I have a really strong colour, then I don't want it to overpower the whole image. And let's say he's the centre of attention on this one. Just build it up. Of course, I've got to have a little bit of gold. Why not? My Amazon packing paper. Yes, starting to come together. So. You don't need to go all the way over the whole of this front because we will be sticking that down. But just have some fun with your little bits of scraps. I don't. I like that, but I don't want the text because I've already got text behind the bird. So I need maybe, that's a nice delicate one. What can we do with that? I think that would be great. Just on the side. So it's really a, a fantastic project for getting exceptionally creative but also feeling like you're using things up and I definitely need to do some of that. If you saw my recent video where I showed how I'm now organising in my craft room, you might know why I just love using up pieces of paper so much. So a bit more. under there. So this one I'm doing with a focal point. I might do one more after this and show you how I've used stamps because I think that's a great supply to use in this. Is that going to cover it up? Yeah, that's all I need to do. And along the top I'm going to add, what should we have, a bit more text. And I don't always feel the need to cover the whole of the flap. I like some of that text from the book page showing through. 
why we have that on there. It can be so random. This, I think the beauty of these is the eclectic nature of them. I want to cover up some of this, first of all the gap, because we've got text and quite a gap now down here. So let, what else shall we add? Shall we have a look in our scrappy box? Now I'd look at this and you might say, why would that go? You wouldn't necessarily think that that would work, but I like to put flashes of colour in these little envelope pockets. Let's go for contrast. And then you look at it and you think, well, actually, it does work. It works really well. Yes, I think what I'll do is add a little bit of washi along some of this, just because I feel like it. And maybe some browner washi. I think I probably need to give that a torn edge. So let your creativity go wild. Just add whatever you fancy and then take a look at what you've created. And the joy of these is because they're really quick. If you don't like what you've done, and sometimes that happens, just have a go at another one. And I bet you find that what you create you do like, but giving yourself that freedom to have a go just means sometimes you create things you otherwise wouldn't if you'd spent ages planning it and thinking what, what would look nice. So I do like that. I might be gilding the lily, but I'm having a good time. Let's put it on there. So where are we at with our steps? So we've collaged the front and the flap and literally use anything you like. Scrap paper, stamps, pens, fabric, labels, washi, Having done that, we can do the gluing. So I'm going to glue down the flap. And then take my pen, so I have a black gel pen, and go round the flap with some faux stitching. And how quick was that to create something that was so much fun. Let's just do one more with some slightly different supplies. I've already added the hinge to this because we know how to do that. What I want to do is just add a bit of stamping on this one. So not too much thought going into this, but I am going to, I'm going to pick a few nice papers. I don't want to use too much of that. That can go on there. A bit of collage on the front again, not going all the way to the edge just because that's how I like it. And I mirror that down at the bottom here. Let's make the margin intentional and see a little bit of that really nice font. There. See if we can go underneath. Yeah, we can. Prefer that blue to be behind there. Okay. And you see how quickly you can do your collage on the front. I want to add a little bit of a line down at the bottom, I think, something extra. I like that, but I'm not sure whether it's the right colour. That's very flash, isn't it? Oh, that's a bit posh. Don't want to lose too much of my lovely design on the paper, but I want something extra. And what I've been doing is just having a play with some new little stamps I've got. And these are just really quite affordable little stamps I got from Stationery Pal. There we go. And it's a great opportunity to just have a go with a few of my pens. So I don't usually buy wooden stamps. I like acrylic ones, but these are really crisp and clear. So I thought I'd have a play with something I haven't used for some time, which is some of my pens in this most enormous box. I want something that goes with the colours that are in this already. So maybe, maybe I should find something. Yeah, we've still got some of that pink showing. Maybe I should show a little bit of that. Oh, a fuchsia one. That's really nice. Oh. So this is a set of, I think it's 120, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, isn't that gorgeous? And then the greens behind. And I need to make more use of these. I love the colours. So I thought I would just dip into them and have a bit of fun colouring in the stamp. I know that some of the flower is hidden, so I don't actually even need to colour it all in. But what I've been doing is just having a play with my pens and colouring in a flash, just a small element, and it personalises it. I really think it makes you feel incredibly ra relaxed when you're doing this. It also means that you can choose colours that go with whatever the palette is, the colour theme of your folio or journal. I've got a green, just for a few of the leaves. Just give it a bit of a base. So if you want to bring a bit more of the artiness into what you're doing, these are a great opportunity for just reminding ourselves about all the other ways of playing in our junk journal that we want to do. Mix it up. Just add something to the flap. Ooh. Bit of purple on here. Not sure which way it goes, but it doesn't really matter. enjoyed this video then check out my playlist where I have over 50 tutorials now making pockets, tags, envelopes, lots of paper goodies. I hope to see you soon.